In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to 3D print and also design a Tower of Hanoi puzzle box set. So here I am playing the game. The idea with the puzzle is to move the discs from the leftmost pole to the rightmost pole without putting a larger disc over a smaller disc. So it's a little bit challenging to complete. That's part of the game. And watch me go ahead and solve the puzzle now before we get into it and actually design it using Tinkercad. One of the cool features about what we're going to design is the compartment below the Tower of Hanoi puzzle box um, to hold the parts. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm thinking about creating a Tower of Hanoi box puzzle is create the box to store the parts. So I'm going to click this red shape here um, in the work plane or the shape toolbar and place it on the work plane, this blue space right here. I right click to just to go ahead and change the perspective a bit and then I'm going to expand out from a corner by pressing and holding one of those boxes um, to get the dimensions I want. And In this case I'm going to actually type in the numbers 80 by 60 um, for this box and this will be the basis for my Tower of Hanoi box game. I'm then going to go ahead and click this shape and then hold down alt, press and hold and move a copy of that uh, original shape off of it. So I have two of these right now and what I'm going to do with this second one is I'm going to set it to a whole pattern and then what I'm also going to do is click this top box, hold down shift, which allows me to scale this down proportionally. Um, and right now what's happening is I've scaled this down um, to a size which is definitely smaller than this red one right here. And the next part will be to actually align this onto this red shape. So to do that, what I'll do is I will use a technique where I'll first go ahead and place a work plane above the red shape. Um, this is to go ahead and, and make this whole pattern visible when I align the two. What I'll then do is I'll click this whole pattern, I'll press D to bring it up to that um, orangish work plane. And then I'm going to hold down shift and then press this red box and I'm going to click the e align tool up here. Quick key is to press L to get to it. Now when I align shapes, uh, I can align it relative to both of these uh, to place it in the center between the two, or I can align relative to just one shape. In this case, I'm going to align it relative to one, so I'll click this red shape, and I'll make sure that I click the center bar on both of those little bubbles. And if you click off of it, you may have to repeat those steps, which I'll do right now. And I'll make sure that I've now aligned it relative to this center um, bubble right there. Let me zoom in. It's a light gray as well as the center um, hash on the left side as well. It is a light gray color. So this whole shape is directly in the center of this red one. I'm then going to drag the work plane in again to place it down or bring it back to its original state. From here, what I'm going to do is I can just lower this down slightly, um, not both shapes in this case. So let me control Z that or command Z it, but click just the whole shape and click this pyramid just to lower it down slightly. Now the trick here is not to lower it down directly to the work plane because that would just create a giant hole through the whole shape. We want it slightly above the work plane to create a floor for this box. So what I'll actually do is I'm just going to increase the size of this whole shape and then I'm going to press D to bring it directly onto the work plane. And then I'm going to raise this up by some amount. And I think about five, um, five millimeters will be a good amount for the thickness of that bottom most wall. What I'll then do is I will highlight the whole shape and then I will group it. So you'll see now that what we get is we get this um, shelf type shape. So this is where we would place the rings for our Tower of Hanoi. And once we have this shape, what we can do is we can just expand it upwards to increase the size of the walls um, if we needed to make that shelf have a little bit more depth. All right, so that's step one complete right there. Um, now, you may also want to think about resizing um, this slightly 
um, to suit your own preferences. You can either drag it downwards or to the side. It's up to you. I'm going to actually control Z it um, and just expand it up um, slightly more just to get a good sense of, of you know, what I was looking for from the beginning. It does look like I need to expand out this bottom wall a little bit. So what I will do is I'm going to drag out this side um, just ever so slightly. Um, you may notice that that doesn't actually expand the walls, but it's okay in this case because I do have enough space to do the next part, which is place pegs to basically be the insertion point for the topmost part of my game. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to create those pegs by dragging in some cylinders. Um, and this is important to get the right size now because I want something that's going to be skinny enough to fit on this wall. And I'm just going to sort of eye it up by scaling it down proportionally. Um, and it looks like maybe a peg of size, um, let's say four, a diameter of four, um, will be pretty reasonable. Let's, let's go ahead and, and, and click this thing here. Um, and let's move this to the side. And it's actually, yes, it is a diameter of four. So with this, we also want to make sure that we have this at an appropriate height. So I'm going to zoom to a side on view, and I'm going to make sure that this is a height of five, uh, five millimeters. And these pegs are going to be placed at each one of the corners at the top of this box. All right, so let's create four of them now. Click one of these uh, orange cylinders, and let me zoom in a little bit. Hold down Alt click and hold to create a copy and move it to the side. And we want to have four of these. So notice how I'm just clicking on one of the cylinders, pressing Alt, press and hold, and move a copy off to the side. So four cylinders up here, which now need to be placed. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the work plane from up here and place it on top of my box. That sets the work plane above um, the topmost portion of the box shape. I'm going to highlight all of those orange cylinders from earlier and press the D key on my keyboard to bring those up to that level. What I'm then going to do is begin the process of aligning these to the topmost portion of this red box, one by one. So I'm going to click one of these cylinders. I'm going to hold down Shift for a multi-select. Then once I have both of these items selected, I'm going to choose the Align tool. And notice how I get a preview whenever I use the Align tool. Um, it is important to click what you want to align it to, which in this case is the red box. So I have clicked it one more time. And if you just hover over one of those boxes, you do get a preview, like I said. So let's just go ahead and start working with that. We do want to move it to the uh, most leftmost edge. So it looks like I have to click this box up here in the top left corner, as well as the one closest to me uh, from the viewer's perspective. So that's one of these pegs aligned. Let's click off of it. Let's go ahead and align the second one. So again, the same pattern. Click one of the cylinders, shift, click the box, click the align tool, align it to the red box. So I'm clicking it one more time. Then go ahead and click some of these uh, little dots to get a preview. And it looks like that one there is all set now relative to me clicking the topmost bubble as well as the bubble closest to me on the right side. Click off this shape. Let's go ahead and set up the next two. Click that cylinder, shift, click the box, click the align tool, align it to the red box by clicking one more time. Go ahead and set it relative to these little bubble um, things that you can click. And that one is set now too. So these are very close to the edge right now. We are going to move them in a second, but I do find that it's best to go ahead and align them to the corners first. So the same pattern, click both of those, align, align to the red box. Let's go ahead and click the bubbles that are needed to go ahead and set it in that corner. So once we have our box like this, let's go ahead and bring the work plane down to its original position. Just drop it into the blue perspective. And let's take a look at this. So these cylinders are very close to the edge, which could be a little bit of a dangerous situation when we print it, um, especially for our lid, um, which where we don't want to have any gaps which are too close to the edge of the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the snap grid is set to uh, one millimeter. And what I'll do is I'll click these cylinders one by one, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to move them. I'm going to move them two to the inside. So by pressing twice with the arrow key, the right arrow key in this case, and then the up key twice, one, two. All right, so look how that's all now centered in the middle of um, the top of the box, or at least that corner. I'm going to do the same thing with this cylinder right here. I'm going to go two to the inside with the left arrow, and in this case, the up arrow twice, two clicks, to move it up two millimeters to the inside. 
I'm then going to go ahead and do the same kind of operation for these two, two topmost cylinders. Click one up here. I'm going to move this two to the right with the right arrow, and then two downwards with the downwards arrow. The idea is to make sure that each of these pegs is not too close to the edge. Let's do the same thing for this one up here. Two left arrow presses, two downward arrow presses to move it down one millimeter per click. Um, if you want to move it down either more or less um, of a degree, you can change the scaling over here for the snap grid. But in this case, I've just left it at one. All right. So this is good. This is the beginning of our, our box, and this will store all the compartments for our, our game, or all the parts for our game, rather. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the lid. So to do this, the way I've, I've found this um, easiest to do is I'm going to do a multi-select on each of these pegs. And you'll definitely see why I'm doing this in a second. And I'm just going to group these temporarily. Grouping them is going to allow me to move them all together. I'm then going to go ahead and press the Alt key to create a copy, and I'm going to move it upwards. And you'll definitely see why I'm doing this, and I'm trying to keep them aligned um, to make my life easier. I just want to move that copy up a sizable amount um, because I want enough of a spacing to create um, the alignment for my lid. Uh, but what we also need to make sure we do, and, and these, these cylinders are going to be used as whole shapes, actually, for the lid. Um, is we need to expand them each individually. So I'm going to click um, these four cylinders, and then I'm going to ungroup them. What I'm then going to do is one by one, I'm going to go to each of these, and I'm just going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to scale it up by one degree, just like that. So making it in all directions slightly fatter. The idea is that if these are hole shapes, and I'll set them to holes right away, is that the holes are big enough to actually fit on these pegs below. Uh, when we do 3D print this, we don't want the shapes to be too flush because we risk them not being able to slide in and be inserted. So with this pole right here, I'm going to hold down Shift again and drag this up one click. Notice how it gets uh, scaled up one millimeter in all directions. And the same thing with this one right here. So that's up to six now. And I do believe um, that I have that set. Yep, I do. And let's go ahead and click this one right here. And let's just look at it from a side view, hold down shift and drag this up one click. And we have that at six two. Um, now all of these do need to be set to holes. So I'm clicking each of them individually now to set them to a hole pattern. Notice how I'm doing that. And now it's a matter of creating the lid shape um, where our poles for the Tower of Hanoi will actually be set upon. So in order to do this step, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup the original um, shape we had. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that red shape. That's my objective. I just want the red, um, the red original box shape from earlier. So let me just go ahead and make sure that I've ungrouped this completely, which I have. I'm then going to hold down Alt to create a copy. I'm going to click and hold to create another red box. With this red box, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the thickness of it by grabbing that topmost box. So notice how I've made a much thinner lid shape. At this point, I'm just going to move it upwards slightly. And, and actually, let's just move it up way up above the rest of our model. And what we'll do now is we'll regroup that bottom portion back to what it once was. Um, and you can group those poles onto the base right now um, because we don't actually need to ungroup it anymore. So now. It's a matter of me thinking about the thickness for this lid, where we do want to go ahead and think about this being scaled to about maybe a five, uh, because that is the height of one of these cylinders too. I'm then going to go ahead and move this shape downwards. And we could just have it like that. So you notice that those cutting shapes go directly through the bottom and also extend up to the top. So now when I highlight um, all those shapes right there, the whole thing, in group it, we should have, yes we do, we have a whole pattern which is large enough to actually fit onto the base. So if I move this downwards now, notice how this would just slide on. And we do have that just sitting perfectly flush on top of our original box. And I can level it up again so you can see what's going on here. OK, so for the moment, let's just lower this down so we can see what this would look like when it's fully assembled. And let's start thinking about the poles. So the poles are going to be made 
as cylinders. So I've dragged out an orange cylinder from the side right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and I'm first going to scale this down to an appropriate size for a pole. Um, that's up to you as far as your judgment. I think eight millimeters is more than wide enough as a diameter. And I'm just going to shoot this thing up right now. Let's go ahead and move it up about 70. That looks like a pretty decent size. You do want this to be proportional. Um, and in this case here, what I'm thinking is, is I do want to go ahead and maybe make this slightly thinner. Um, so I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to try to scale this down a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the size by clicking off this object and clicking it again. Um, you can also put down the ruler to get a good sense of the measurements. Looks like it's 6.51 as far as the diameter. It's good enough for me. Um, we do want three of them. So once you have one pole that you like, press the Alt key on your keyboard, press and hold one of your shapes, and let's create three of these poles like this. Excellent. Okay. So once you have three poles, it's important that we align these onto the topmost portion of our Tower of Hanoi puzzle box. So let's begin with the leftmost pole. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to hold down Shift, do a multi-select. And if you are seeing this window right here, it means you're on the ruler. So I have to dismiss that first. Excuse me. So let's start that all over. Click the pole, hold down Shift. Click the topmost portion of the box. Click the Align tool up at the top align it to the top box. Then you can go ahead and start thinking about how you would place this thing. Now, what I've realized now is if I do this right now and then I and I place it into that leftmost portion, um, it's not level with the top of the box, but that's pretty easy to fix um, to go ahead and put this pole so the bottom part of it is basically on top of this red box. You can do that by grabbing the work plane, setting it to the top of the red box, clicking the pole and then pressing D. And in that case, um, by mistake, what I've done is I've set the red um, lid to basically respond to the D press. But in this case, what I want to do is set the cylinder with a D. Um, and the D key press will always set the shape to the work plane. And in this case, the work plane is set to this orange um, color. It's slightly higher than the original blue work plane. Um, now, let's go ahead and just do both of these here, let's let's go ahead and raise their level um, by clicking them both now that we have the work plane raised. And I'm going to press D to raise these both up. What I'll then do is I will align one of these poles to the rightmost portion of this box here by then holding down Shift and clicking that red box, Align Tool, align it to the top of the box. And let's start thinking about how we can start placing this thing. And you do need to orbit around sometimes to, to sort of get the correct perspective. Um, we are looking for something like this and, and sometimes you do need to click around to, to get it to the right orientation you want, but you want something like that. Uh, we are going to move them inwards a bit afterwards. What I'll then do is click off and let's align that centermost one. Hold down shift, do a multi-select, align tool, and we want to align it to the red lid. Click that center bubble click the center one right here, and that is dead in the center. What I'll then do is I'll grab the work plane from the side, move it to the blue area to bring it back down to the bottom. So these two poles on the right and the left are way too much to the side. So what I'll do is I'll go one by one, and I want to move this inwards, and I will go ahead and set this to maybe a larger movement of two, the snap grid, so each key press should move it in two millimeters. Click this pole, and let's click it once. And again, and let's do it one more time. So three movements inwards. In fact, let's even go four. Um, there you go. That's good enough for us. We do want enough spacing for our rings to slide on and also not hit each other. What I'll then do is I'll click this rightmost pole and I'll move this in one, two, three, four. Okay. So now we have three poles um, extending up from the lid, and these will be where we place our rings. Let's go ahead and group them to the lid by clicking the red lid, holding down shift, and then clicking each of these poles individually to do a multi-select. And just for clarity's sake, I'll set the color to green. So when we group these all, um, they all turn the same color. So all of these are now one item. And if I raise this up, you can see that our beginning of our Tower of Hanoi um, is really starting to take shape. Um, let's level this down again. 
Okay. So the time has now come to create some rings. Um, and to create the rings, I'm going to do about four of them. And there are a few ways you can definitely do this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just create it, the rings out of the cylinders here. Um, and I'm going to go from the bottom most ring first. So I'm just set the work plane to the top portion of my uh, puzzle board, um, the green shape. And I'm just going to move one cylinder over like that. Um, and this will be my first ring. And we might as well expand this out a little bit. Um, and you can align this as you see fit. So I'm take your time with it. I'm going to just go ahead and, and expand it up from the center. So that will be my bottom most ring. And now let's just go ahead and lower it down. And we'll say that each of these rings should be about a thickness of, let's say, about four millimeters. That's pretty decent. That's a nice thickness. And it would look pretty good as the bottom most ring. Um, so that's enough for us to work with right there um, as a starting point. At this point now, I'm going to go ahead and drag the work plane out like that. I'm going to move this ring over to the side and press D to move it to the bottom of the work plane. Now, what I do need to do is I need to create um, a series of these rings um, of different sizes. And I should actually call them disks, but they're more like disks. So what I'll do to do that is I'm going to create some copies. So this will be one copy right here. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and hold down the shift to go ahead and scale this down. And if you scale it down too much, um, you know, you can always redo it. Um, and in this case here, where the snap grid is set to two, we may have to go ahead and reduce that a little bit. So let's go ahead and move that down. So yeah, now we actually get these nice movements, um, controlled movements moving down by the millimeter. So that will be about my second ring. Uh, let's go ahead and create a copy of this. And we can definitely adjust these. We'll create another one. So let's move this one down. All right, so that's two. So the rings are getting a little small right now. So maybe we will have to make some adjustments here. Um, by maybe scaling each of these up a little bit, but um, we'll handle that at the end. Uh, we do want to make sure that these are all about the same thickness, though, of four, which is what we described earlier as, as the size we want for these. So let's already fix those up. Um, I do think that this should be scaled down a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and handle that. And let's create one more, and we'll see how it goes. So we're going to create a copy by pressing Alt on our keyboards, press and hold to the side. And I will go ahead and, and drag this dimension up once um, just to handle basically the scaling down so it doesn't disappear on me. And I'm just going to scale this down um, to something like that. Now, it's debatable whether these are going to fit on these poles now um, because this ring, especially on the right, is pretty small. Um, but we're going to go ahead and work on the sizing now. So I'm going to click the lid now. I'm going to ungroup everything. The reason for that is I want to be able to select just one pole. I'm going to hold down Alt to make a copy, press and hold and move one of those poles to the side, and then press D to bring it down to the work plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and test and see if this pole would be um, large enough, or, or, or small enough, rather, to make a hole in one of our disks. And that looks perfect. It looks great. So this is good enough for me. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll copy this pole four times, like this, all right? And the idea now is to set each of these shapes um, to a hole pattern. So I'm doing a multi-select, and then I'm going to make all of those holes. So now what we need to do um, is, before we actually insert those in, let's make sure that this disk here is a nice four. Um, in fact, all of these we're going to make sure are about four. Some nice thick rings for our, for our game. It looks like this one right here is also four. And this one right here is also four. So we're golden now. All of these are the same thickness. So let's start aligning them. We're going to do a multi-select between the hole and that pole on the left. Align to this orange disk. Center, center. And we will do the same thing which e with each of these disks individually. Multi-select between two objects. Align to the center as well as to the center. Let's go ahead and do the same right here with this shape and this shape. Uh, we don't actually have to align it to the orange thing. In this case, we can just go ahead and, and just immediately click both of those centermost um, bubble marks to do the alignment. And let's do this final one right here. Align to the center as well as to the center. So look at that. We've got all of these now, which can be highlighted. Um, I do recommend doing them individually. 
as far as grouping. So I've highlighted one of those pairs, and then I'm going to group it. I'm going to group this one. I'm going to group this third one, as well as this farthest one on the left. OK, so we've got all these disks. And what I just realized right now is that these holes um, that we've created for these disks are most likely not going to be large enough um, to fit onto these rings. It's going to be too flush of a size. Um, and you can kind of see that if we were to sort of just lower this down. Um, one thing that I forgot to do is make sure that the holes um, for these rings are actually enlarged a little bit. So we're going to have to handle that now after the fact. So what I'll do is I'll ungroup each of these now. It's not too bad for, of, a, of something that we need to do right now. So I'm going to ungroup each. Now I'm realizing that this fourth ring is going to be a little bit close to the edge, but no worries. Let's make it happen. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm just going to drag this up about, let's go to 61, or let's go to 63. I think that would probably be large enough. So I'm going to drag each of these up now to 63. And I'm holding down Shift, so as I drag up from the center box, the sides, the diameter of this cylinder is also increasing as well. So hopefully this one doesn't cut it too close. Let's see. Yeah, it's fine. OK, so we'll just handle this again. We're going to group all of these again. And the reason, again, we, why we did that was to make sure that these rings can actually slide onto the poles. Um, so I've guesstimated a little bit, but from experience, um, I do believe that those holes will be large enough. Um, and if we really wanted to test it, which I do recommend, um, let's go ahead and, and, and see if it would actually slide onto that middle pole there. So I'm going to press D. And I'm just going to move this over. And, and let's see. It's going to be very tight. Um, it's looking like. But you know what? I'm going to say that this is going to be good enough for us in this case. Um, hopefully so. If you don't want to cut it so close, you can make sure that from the beginning your, your rings are um, the perfect size instead of doing what I'm doing, which is a little bit of um, guesstimation work, just looking at the shapes and eyeing it up. But we're going to say that this is good enough. So now's the time to think about aligning this for 3D printing. Um, and in order to do that, we need to make sure all these shapes are on the work plane. And we also need to disassemble this um, because if we were to print this as is, um, we wouldn't be able to maintain that inner box shape. The supports from the printer would most likely be inserted to hold this up. So what I'll do is I'll hold down Shift now, click this green lid, and I'm going to group all those parts for the lid the green parts and group them again, realizing that I ungrouped them earlier to grab a cylinder. Let's move this off to the side and then press D. Um, now, when I align for 3D printing, I do like to keep my shapes compact. Um, that's going to save you time when you 3D print if you have um, all your stuff as close together, because the printer head won't have to travel as far as a distance to go ahead and lay down some plastic to create the shape. So. Something like this is pretty good um, as far as a compact shape. All of these are set to the work plane. Um, and this is a completed Tower of Hanoi box set ready to be 3D printed. So the final step from here from Tinkercad is to click this export button. I'm going to go ahead and click it right now. I'm going to click STL. I have my file, which has been fired out right here. And this is the file that I would be moving into my CAD um, slicing software to load into my 3D printer to make one of these Tower of Hanoi puzzle box game sets. So that's how you do it. Next up is actually bringing this to the printer. All right, so here we are in my slicing software automaker, which is the software they recommend for my printer, which is a cell Robox. Uh, I've already inserted the STL file into the software, and you can see that from here, once it's aligned, I'm just going to go ahead and click that to settings button. We do get three different types of print quality that we can choose from for our cell Robox printer. You may or may not have options like that with your printer. Uh, I just happen to, as well as an estimate for how much um, the filament used to print this thing will cost. Not cheap, but we're going to go ahead and do it. It's going to take four hours and six minutes um, to produce this thing. And we could preview it if we want, but we're just going to cut to the chase. And I'm going to click Make. I'm just going to go ahead and heat the printer up and it'll proceed to print.
times when you want to export all the separate components in your CAD file separately. So maybe you want to print each of these parts out one by one rather than all of it at one time. So the way to do that is go ahead and select some of the items presently in the file. And you can go ahead and delete them away. And we can just export each of these items separately. And I'm just going to be pulling these files off. So keep both there. And let's go ahead and now run some undos. You can do control Z as the quick command as well. And what we'll do from here is we'll delete away that top part now. It is a little redundant to go ahead and delete away some of these items like this, but this is how I go about doing it. So this would be the second export for that middle part. So the idea is to make sure that each of our files is in a separate STL file. So let's go ahead and back this up one final time. And of course, to go ahead and get those rings now, we're going to delete the box on the top and export just the rings themselves. Good idea afterwards is to rename each of these, but this will allow you to go ahead and load in each of these STL files one by one into your slicing software for printing. And we'll just go ahead and we'll return the file back to its initial state with everything. So that's how you export your items from your Tinkercad file one by one.